Brother Dan, what's happening? All kinds of good things, B. All kinds of good things as you and I, I mean, it seems somewhat contrived. I hope the audience appreciates the fact that we pretty much lived together in the past couple of weeks preparing the meeting academy. So to come, for you to come at me and ask me what's going on, like, I think you know, man. I think you kind of know. Um, for our listeners, how did you like that uh, intro? We we decided that we wouldn't subject you to our impromptu intro every single time and reintroduce ourselves over and over again. Hopefully by this point, you know who we are. If not, you heard the intro. So we just get to jump into our meaning conversations. Well, you know, B, I think that's an interesting point because the goal would be to expand our mutual audiences into the Meaning Academy from the Defiant Spirit and the Meaning Project podcast. And uh, as we launch this new venture of the Meaning Academy, um, maybe people don't know about us. But for those of you that are listening, we're just going to assume you do as we leap into our conversation. Uh, uh, I guess we'll call it nuggets from the upcoming search for meaning curriculum, right? I think that's a catchy title. I don't know. We maybe pair it down a little bit, but yes, nuggets. <laughs> yeah, please don't anyway. use that as a title. That was just on the spur of the moment. <laughs> so yes, to all of our listeners, um, we are delighted that you're, you've are you added, hopefully you haven't chosen either or, it's both and. You get them all for free on your favorite uh, podcast platform. You can listen to Dan's Meaning Project, to My Defiant Spirit, and now to The Meaning Academy. And we are um, talking this week about, as Dan suggested, our upcoming Meaning Mastermind. We had called it the Meaning Meeting, but I think we really both like the Meaning Mastermind, though, you know, all this is a work in progress. And in it, we're just going to um, focus on our favorite topic of meaning, get into it, talk about it. And we're doing it um, We're doing it live every Thursday. I'll just share a little more about that, and then we'll get into the topic. Yeah, absolutely. I think the transition from meaning meeting to meaning mastermind it happened quite organically as we realized the goal of this is really to offer a mastermind situation rather than a recovery or AA or 12 step kind of meeting where everybody shares. Our goal that we've kind of refined is to offer motivation and inspiration. And so the idea is, you know, if you have questions, hit us up prior to um, the time we meet, Thursdays, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, email, there's a Facebook page. And if if we get to that question, we're certainly going to try. But the goal is to come up with something topical, maybe not always Dr. Frankel, but certainly something oriented towards meaning one of his students, maybe some of our own research, and address those on a weekly basis. Um, where was I going with that? Be meaning masterminds. I, I had some some points there. Uh, the idea that oh, that was the other point. Sorry. Currently, I believe we've talked about this is going to be by invitation only for the next couple of weeks. We have some people we'd like to bring in um, to help us work through the kinks and the and the beta. And eventually, I would say in the next few weeks to a month this summer, um, meeting masterminds are going to be open to the general public for people to come and. And again, get that inspiration, feel motivated and oriented towards meaning. Yeah, it's not because we don't uh, love you out there. It's because we do love you that we're not going to subject you <laughs> to the, uh, you know, the painful, the growth pains of um, getting this off the ground. We want to work out some of those kinks, even just some of the logistics of, um, you know, how it's happening, the platform, all that. And so by the time, um, hopefully you're listening to this, we'll be much closer to open invitation every Thursday, as Dan said, uh, three o'clock East Coast. You can do the math from there, your time zone, just to gather a tribe, our meaning tribe together weekly to inspire us, to motivate us, and to bring us into to sync, into unison as we make this journey of meaning together. So stay tuned for more. For now, we will uh, share with you some insights, hopefully some inspiration into what we'll be um, exploring this week, which is also tied to a program we're going to be launching here pretty soon that you'll be able to um, jump into. To uh, It'll be a four purchase program, eight weeks, walking through Dr. Viktor Frankl's seminal book, Man's Search for Meaning. He has 40, 50 other odd 
a lot of books, uh, 40 or 50 other books that um, are amazing. Not all of them are in English. Most of them are. Not all of them are the, the, uh, that well-known. This one is. This is his most well-known book, The Man's Search for Meaning. And Dr. Dan and I thought we would create a parallel program to walk participants through the book. Um, and so it's called Your Search for Meaning. And so stay tuned for that. A lot of teasers here. But for now, let's just jump into sort of the first week of our program, the first week of our curriculum, which hovers around the preface and the introduction of Man's Search for Meaning. And one of the things we found out that was a lot of fun in our initial planning stages is currently there are, are multiple editions of Man's Search for Meaning available. As you and I uh, simultaneously but separately started drafting up the curriculum for this course, we discovered um, there are a few different prefaces to the volume. And uh, I just, your first comment on how to come up with that preface, the first draft, the first time I ever read your draft of that curriculum, I thought, oh, this is not going to work. I, I may have to go find a different meaning partner in this. It was, a, I, and now as we've talked through it months later, um, such a powerful statement. And, and before we get into, I'm going to go ahead and call uh, uh, Rabbi Kushner's um, introduction, the newer one, yours from uh, American psychologist, I believe, Gordon Alport. Yep. Correct. I think that's his history. How does the good Dr. Alport start out his preference be or his preface be? <laughs> Um, so this is a 1984 edition, and I think it puts it into a little context. You know, now there's trigger warnings on like bubblegum wrappers. I mean, it's like everywhere, right? Trigger warning, trigger warning. You know, in 1984, there, were no, there was no such thing as a trigger warning. They were just pulling the trigger. And what are you talking about? We still had candy cigarettes in 1984. We were teaching the young kids <laughs> I how saw to those smoke. The other day. I saw those and I, I showed my kids because we were at some novelty store and they're like, oh my God, you walk around. Remember you puff on them too and the, the, you get a puff right out of it? Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> so anyways, but, you know, there were no trigger warnings. There was nothing. Um, there were there even seatbelts back in the day. So now everything's, you know, super secure and safe. And, and to, in some ways, it's an improvement. I think in some ways, it's got some challenges. This uh, preface from 1984, in Man's Search for Meaning by Gordon Alpert, is the antithesis of a trigger warning. So how does it begin? Dr. Frankel, as Gordon Alpert wrote, author, psychiatrist, sometimes asks his patients who suffer from a multiple, multitude of torments, great and small, why do you not commit suicide? <laughs> So, you know, just jumps right. The first line, that's the first sentence. Dr. Alpert is reminding us, if you've studied any um, logotherapy, Viktor Frankl was known to ask his patients on their encounter meeting um, and the intake, why don't you commit suicide? Why would he ask this question, right? How could Gordon Alpert lead into man's search for meaning with this? Because it's not about a question, it's not a question about suicide. It's not, why don't you commit suicide? What Dr. Frankel was asking is something that he asked himself, is that other prisoners in Auschwitz and the other camps ask themselves every single day, not why you don't kill yourself, what do you live for? What do you live for? Here's the question back at you, Dan, why? Wouldn't he just say, why, what do you live for? Why would he put it in the negative? Why do you not commit suicide? Well, I think a, a couple ideas on that. First of all, um, as it did for me, when I read that in your initial draft of our curriculum for the search for meaning, uh, there's some, it, it woke you up. It'll wake you up. It's, there's some shock by you there. There's some, oh, damn. So that's how this is going to be? this is the kind of conversation we're going to have. All right, let's go. Um, and I believe as a fellow therapist and logotherapist, it was a different time, right? We want to capture our clients. We want to capture people's attention initially, but maybe Dr. Frankel lived in somewhat hardier times and certainly the suffering he went through, um, what we deal with today pales in comparison. And so I think 
he was known for being quite directional and very pointed in his statements. And I just think that was his way of asking that same question, but really capturing the moment of why haven't you? What is it that you've lived for? Let's get right to it. Because the other side of things is the as as logotherapy is the antithesis to psychoanalysis. Um, even he joked, right? You know, what, what's the difference between psychoanalysis and logotherapy? Well, in psychoanalysis, people lay on a couch and and talk about their past. Um, and uh, in logotherapy, people get to sit upright and we uh, talk about what they're going to do in the future. Well, the, psycho- the, other piece, the other piece of that is in psychoanalysis, people talk about difficult things. Mm-hmm. And in logotherapy, you have to listen to difficult things. Correct. That That is a very good point, right? In psychoanalysis, I mean, historically, psychoanalysis was known to last years, multiple sessions in a week. Could you imagine your local insurance provider saying, oh, yeah, we'll authorize five sessions a, a, a week for uh, 52 weeks at, uh, yeah, the, no, that's not happening anymore. Um, logotherapy and Dr. Frankel, uh, much more to the point and much more of, of quick solutions were offered. Here are the things you need to do, whereas Freud would allow you to lay on the couch and talk about your dreams, until maza, until faza, and uh, sorry, I'm going to get in trouble for that. Um, you know, talk about your past and your history. Good, actually. I thought that was a good one. Oh, thank you. Um, that was terrible. <laughs> uh, Frankel offers solutions. And that's certainly what we do in the Meaning Academy and in the curriculum and the upcoming Meaning Masterminds. It is about solutions and how to move forward into meaning. So that was a very long explanation of a simple question of why did he ask that question? B, I, I want to know from you, right? That was your favorite uh intro i think to man search for meaning what was it for you in alport when when i not only read this but when i learned about this um in studying frankel and logotherapy i love it i absolutely love it and i say this as a um two-time survivor of people who have killed themselves mm-hmm. my father took his life my grandmother took her, her life and I, if I could go rewind, if I could go back in time, I would look my father in the eyes and I would say, why do you not commit suicide? And I would demand him answer it. I wouldn't leave the room. I wouldn't leave his side until he looked me in the eyes and gave me his reasons. Because I believe if he would have articulated his reasons hmm. of not committing suicide and living, I believe he'd still be here. I believe if he would have used that as a mantra every single day, my dad would still be here. And I learned from those experiences. You know, when my grandmother did kill herself, it was around the time of this uh, Gordon Alport. It was 1986, maybe. And we didn't talk about her suicide. It was off limits. It was hushed tones. You know, it was back in the days of you don't talk about We didn't talk about um, sexuality. You know, I had a cousin who was gay. I was off limits. We didn't talk about um, my grandmother's suicide. That was off limits. There was so much that was in the shadows. And I've learned the dangers of those unspoken conversations, those direct, look each other in the eyes and have the tough conversations. So I respect Frankel deeply for just cutting to the heart of the matter and looking somebody in the eyes and demanding that we have a meaningful conversation, no holes barred. I love it. Absolutely love it. And obviously I do too, um, because that's the nature of who we are and what we do on a daily basis. Unfortunately, be wrong time, wrong world for that. The, well, the, the culture we live in today says, no, you can't do that. And I have to wonder if people that listen to, to our podcast and now this uh, initial meaning academy podcast maybe that's why they're listening um i know that's why i love our conversations because we live in a world today that says no thou shall not have important conversations yes you can talk about suicide now you can publicize it all over social media which then creates other difficulties and people wanting to repeat that and we know that in our teenage population but we can't often have other difficult conversations now and and that's what we aim to do Well, I'm going to challenge that and say, look, our culture, you know, the externals are not encouraging it. They're discouraging it. They're forbidding it. But 
human nature is human nature and human nature will prevail and human beings need to have direct honest communication so i as as you know i was a rabbi for a long time i did over 500 funerals and people don't like tiptoeing around people when you're going through grief if you lost i've i've counseled many people who have lost children it's i imagine it's the most horrific experience in our lifetime that we could ever have but the thing is is their friends their family their extended family acquaintances would say they don't want to bring up the, the dead child's name they don't want to make the parent uncomfortable and what the parent invariably says is talk to me about my dead child say their name it's I, I they think about it all day every day so for you to bring it up isn't a trigger it's actually therapeutic it's meaningful i have not met a parent who lost a child who doesn't want to talk about their child who so doesn't why to their they're... friends their relatives their people around them why do we as a people as a culture as a society struggle to do or say anything meaningful to people who are grieving especially those grieving the loss of a child the loss of a spouse the love the, the loss of a parent the loss of a loved one why are we so terrible at being at being meaningful or even helpful to people or, or knowing somebody who's gone going through depression or somebody who attempted suicide why do we like think that we're, those are off limits mm -hmm. because we are terrified of death bingo and that's an interesting point we are and that's maybe the 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 difference in logotherapy and logotherapists is we have to confront that we have to confront the existential angst we're, as as Dr. Frankel teaches us, as logotherapy, logo philosophy teaches us, um, as we all know, we're going to die. We're all terminal. You don't get through this game alive. Newsflash. Newsflash, right? I carry around. I don't have either one with me. I was thinking about this. There is time to time I will wear, especially to my office, a bracelet made out of yak bone uh, yak bone skulls. And that was given to me by another logo therapist who I went through training with. And um, Tibetans use yak bone to represent uh, living a, uh, a humble life. And I can't remember the complete story behind the yak bone. Um, so living a humble life, but also why skulls be? To remember, we're all going to die. And the Stoics, I carry it. I'll wear that occasionally, but I carry a, a Stoic coin with me. What, is this, what do the Stoics say? I love this phrase. Memento mori remember that you too shall die why are all of these cultures ancient and even modern telling us you have to contemplate death so anybody listening one of the top questions i would get as a rabbi is family member dies should i take my child to the funeral they're five years old should i take them unequivocally yes yes take your children talk to them about death Talk to them about, don't use euphemisms. Grandma has gone to her eternal rest, right? Kids can handle it. They should handle it. The only reason it's scary is because you're scared of it. Mm -hmm. They, they, my, my son, you know, my family is different. We, we talk about it. We talk about angels. We talk about spirits. We talk about heaven. We talk about the reality, the realities that we will all die. And my kids are incredibly comfortable with it. It is not, it doesn't have a grip on them like it had on me mm -hmm. in my household with the hushed tones. I lived with so much fear of these hushed conversations. They were terrifying to me. All the off-limit conversations take on a life of their own and become terrifying and debilitating. So we so so logotherapy is about taking back your power not allowing your circumstances to have power over you. And that's why we have to have these conversations. So two points to that. Yes, absolutely take your children to funerals because as children, we are the most resilient we will ever be in our entire lives unless we do actual resilience training, right? Like children are resilient because we don't know fear of the world yet. And as long as our parents continue to be that support structure for us, um, and, and let us know the reality of the world and that death is a reality, kids are going to be okay. They're going to bounce back. They're going to be resilient. Hopefully they'll be sad and mourn grandma's passing or mourn whoever it is, but they'll move forward. The opposite of that in my, my clinical practice, what I see is the adults who did not go to those funerals and those adults who today 
because they didn't get to process that, because they didn't know, they just know grandpa was there one day and then he wasn't anymore. No closure. And as adults, they have all kinds of issues with relationships and grief and loss and death. Yes, it's important for us as a culture to memento mori, to embrace death and know that because what we teach in logotherapy is recognizing life's transitoriness, recognizing that we're only here for a short amount of time sweetens the time that we're here. It makes life meaningful. Recognize that we only have a certain amount of years should motivate you to do something important, to do something meaningful with the time that you have. The next line of this right after that, which relates to what you're talking about is, you know, why do you not commit suicide? Frankel didn't end there. And Alport says the following, from their answers, right, his patient's answers, the person who's answering this question, their answers, Frankel often found the guideline for his logotherapy. In one life, there is love for one's children to tie to. Tie to. In another life, a talent to be used. In a third, perhaps only lingering memories worth preserving. To weave these slender threads of a broken life into a firm pattern of meaning and responsibility is the object and challenge of logotherapy. That's why. Because this question takes you into the core you know, the, the raison d'etre, the reason for your being, the reason, why are you here? What are you here to do? We're not leaving this conversation, dad, until you articulate to me your why. I owe it to you as your son to demand that you face this question because I knew he was contemplating it. I knew he was toying with the idea. And I didn't confront him and make him look me in the eyes and answer his why and weave that into the thread of a life. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, you know, like it was, it was, it was, it is what it is, but we can redeem those things by learning, taking on the tough conversations, challenging ourselves around these uncomfortable conversations, having them. I've never met anybody who's come out the other side of these meaningful, painful conversations regretting they had the conversation. Absolutely. And I think that's the nature of what we do, whether it's in one-on-one -on -one clinical practice or group consulting, organizational consulting with uh, and, and leadership coaching. We need to have difficult conversations around meaning and around all the other issues. And too often as human beings, we fear those difficult conversations. But as you said, never has anybody who maybe went through the coaching or went through the consulting of having those, and went through the counseling of having a difficult conversation, come back and said, well, that was pointless. Never is it pointless to have a difficult, meaningful conversation. And more often than not, everybody in that conversation comes out far better than they went into it. And also, I love this question. I mean, I love is a pretty strong word, but um, I really respect this question because it's also insightful in that why do you not commit suicide understands that you haven't done it. It means that you, it's actually affirmative mm -hmm. because you've had this choice for how old are you? 49? 48 B. 40. I, I got a couple yeah, weeks. Yeah. I got a couple weeks. I'm not ready for that. You had 48 years to opt out and you haven't opted mm -hmm. out. And what I am doing mm -hmm. is I'm getting you to articulate the reason why you haven't opt out or the reasons why you haven't opt out. And now you're, we're building on that. We're building a life on, I call them the rocks, right? Going back to this great teaching that I found on the internet, like 20 years ago, Google rocks in a jar and you'll get a professor who came to his, and I'm sure many of you have heard this. I'll just repeat it. Who, who said to his students, I want to teach you a life lesson. And he took a jar you're watching. I have my yes, jar. You're going to show it. Yes. Show us the rocks, B. And he had a jar and he had a pile of rocks, a pile of sand and a pile of pebbles. And he said, how do you make this all fit? And they have different permutations. If you put the sand in and then the pebbles, you'll never get the rocks in. And he said, the only way to do it is to put the rocks in first. And then the pebbles find their way down to the bottom. And then the sand finds its ways down to the top, et cetera. And the life lesson is put your rocks in the jar first. And the rocks for Frankel are your why, right? So my son, Aviv, my daughter, Shoshana, my family, my writing, my meditation. These are, I wrote these literally on there, rocks in my jar. And whenever I forget 
um, I come back to these because these are my why. If Frankel were to ask me why you don't commit suicide, and as a th I could potentially be a third generation, I won't be because I have my rocks in a jar. And that's my challenge to people. Don't hear just the scary part of this conversation. Hear the motivational, the aspirational part. What are your rocks that go in your jar? Well, and I'm going to go ahead and make it unscary again. We're all going to die, B. Shouldn't be afraid of it. It's going to happen, right? Why waste time and energy worrying about something that is inevitable? Turn that around and do something meaningful. Find the meaning. Discover the meaning every day. It is a natural human reaction to have a little bit of existential angst, to wonder, huh, what happens when it's all over? And I think sometimes it goes against modern times and culture and society to say, you know what, I'm going to find something important to do because I am here. And that's why you and I are here is to continue to share that message with people. Get out there and discover meaning because, you know, you, you oh boy, I wish I could remember who I heard it from. But if, if, if you live forever, well, you would have every day, you would become the ultimate procrastinator. Or I can wait till tomorrow. Yeah, B, let's not worry about the podcast. We can do it tomorrow. We can do it next week. I would, B, it's going to be really uncomfortable. This meaning academy thing, that is a lot of work, brother. I don't want to do, let's wait till next year, right? If, if there wasn't an expiration date, we would have all day, every day. That's right. But we do have an expiration date. And that's why we need to do meaningful things every chance we get. That's right. And that's why we're having this conversation up front to point people back to when they're saying, hey, this is uncomfortable. This is challenging. This is scary. It is, you know, as I always remind people, you're living on a rock in outer space, spinning around a hot ball of fire, waiting to die. Like it's scary, but it doesn't have to be meaningless. It can be, that makes it meaningful when you're willing to face the difficulties, the challenges, and to realize you're not doing it alone. Your discovery is yours, but we do it as a tribe, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we want the Meaning Academy to have the hard conversations to discover our own respective meaning but to do it in the support of our meaning tribe beautifully stated i don't even know where to go with that man if you if you're fortunate look you're all fortunate you're listening you can have a rabbi in colorado or a clinician in farmville indiana to partner with to be part of your meaning tribe and we hope you will decide to join us on this uh meaningful adventure that started i don't know I, we need to we need to time stamp this b i'm going to go back and figure out when we did the first dr d and rabbi b podcast because that was only a few weeks after you hit me up and said hey uh you uh you like logotherapy and we have the same, same hairstylist we should get together and, and do some cool stuff and just a short time later here we are doing some really i i hope i know will be some really meaningful activities that we get to share with with the audience today and hopefully a, a greater world uh, shortly so stay tuned the meaning masterminds are going to be open to the public very soon we would love for you to join us until then jump over to the meaning academy.com the mm -hmm. meaning academy.com where you can get um things that we're doing now you can get you can read about things that we'll, we will be doing. You can learn more ways to engage us individually or collectively, themeaningacademy.com. Sign up for our newsletter over there so you can stay tuned with all the happenings and yeah, live your meaning, your purpose, and your resilience, and we'll support you on the journey. Yeah, and I think ideally by the next time, our next uh, meaningful conversation needs to be a better tagline than what you just came up with, but we'll, we'll get to yeah, I, I felt your pain. I'm like, oh, come on, B. You're going to come up with something glorious. And like on the spot, it was a little hard. Uh, Live your was, meeting. And I don't know. Yeah, we'll, you know. We'll, we'll get there. Hey, I tell you what, here's our far, first call to action. If you have a better tagline than what B just mumbled through and what I avoided at all costs, I'll take my part. I stepped away from that one. Come on, man. Let's face it. You and I have been collaborating and spitting out meaningful wisdom in print and verbs and words nonstop day in, like literally day in and day out for weeks so i'm going to give you a reprieve on that one you you couldn't come up with it right away <laughs> like i get it it's friday probably well, I, I, almost out. Said, I almost said defy your number live your spirit which is the wrong uh <laughs> which is the wrong brand for this so you know 
Okay. Well, and I, I could have went with, and thank you for allowing me to bring a little bit of mental health and meaning to your day. <laughs> wrong podcast, man. Wrong podcast. So we're going to have to, maybe we'll get our co-collaborator and co-founder of the Meaning Cad, uh, Academy, Dr. Elise, to come in and chime in at some point with that. Tell you what, a more beautiful uh, segue out of here is now you're going to listen to the outro for our Meaning Academy podcast. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.